and we will be using triple integrals and we'll just focus on the setup and we'll show you guys the rectangular, cylindrical and the spherical coordinate system. Here we go. Let's say we have a sphere with radius A. We are not using little r because we have little r in this cylindrical system already. So first, we will need to have an equation and the equation is based on the reference frame that we choose. So I'm going to do it like this. The center of the sphere is the origin and this right here is my x-axis and here is the y-axis and then we have our z-axis. And the equation for that, well let me remind you guys, if we have a circle in the x-y plane, the equation for this is just x squared plus y squared equals whatever the radius is and then we square that. Now we have a three-dimensional case, we just have to add the z squared to it. So the equation for the sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals the radius squared. Now let's do the rectangular coordinates first. So here we go, the volume equals. When we use triple integrals, the volume is equal to 1, 2, 3, 3 integrals. We just have to integrate 1 and then dv. So let's say here is my first integral and then next I have my second integral and then lastly we have our third integral right here. And then we will have 1 right here and then dv in the x, y, z world is just dx, dy, dz. And they are just multiplying. So it depends on which order that you want to do first. Because we have z that goes up and down like this, right? Based on the picture. I would like to do dz first. And then next we will have, let's say y. Uh, so dy here. And lastly we do the x, so dx. And now we just have to figure out the limits of integrations based on the order z first. So now, we have to look at our equation here. Isolate z. I just have to move these two terms to the other side and we see z squared equals a squared minus x squared and then minus y squared. From here, we just have to take the square roots on both sides and make sure we include the plus or minus the minus here is the bottom portion, it's underneath the xy plane. So as we can see, the lower z is the negative square root of that part, and then the upper part is the positive square root. So in fact, we can figure this out right here already. z, we will have negative square root a squared minus x squared minus y squared, up to positive square root a squared minus x squared minus y squared. Done that. Next, we are looking for the y. So, just think about it on the xy plane. What's y though? Well, we don't have z anymore. Don't have to worry about z anymore. So, if you just have x squared plus y squared is equal to a squared, then in that case, our y squared is equal to a squared minus x squared. And then we just take the square root and then plus or minus. Pretty much do the same thing. Again, it's just like we don't have the y right here anymore, right? Because it's t already. So dy, here we will have the minus square root a squared minus x squared up to positive square root a squared minus x squared, just like that. And then lastly, after we are done with the y, now we have to look at the x. So for the x, just look at it as a circle, right? It's like earlier it was x, y. Now the x, this is the x-axis, we will just go from negative a to a, right? This is like no more x right here, so it's just negative a to a. So of course, when you integrate this by hand, 
The first step is easy, right? Integrating 1 in the z word to z. But then you will have to put that in there and then put that in there. Integrating this in the y world, you will have to do some trick substitution. Yeah, not so bad. Well, not, 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 not the best that you want to do, right? So this is the setup, but usually we don't want to do that. Now, let's talk about how can we use the cylindrical system to help us out. For the cylindrical one, dz, dy, dx, dz stays the same, right? So I will still maintain dz here. But dy, dx, this right here, right, this right here, just change that to polar, which we will have r and then dr, d, theta, right? Let's just do this in this order, yeah? Let's do it in this order. So now we will have the inside integral, you have to focus on the z, and then next we will have to do it with the r, and lastly d theta, let's put it on the very outside like that. So now for dz, is it still going from this, now is it still going from this to that? Well, be careful now, because the truth is right here is here. Notice we can factor our negative. This right here gives us plus or minus square root a squared minus, this is just x squared plus y squared, which we can change that to r squared in the polar world. Aha, so z, if you do the cylindrical one, it goes from negative square root of a squared minus r squared up to positive square root of a squared minus r squared, okay? And then next we have r, hmm, so r is what though? r is the, if you look at the xy plane, r is how far you go out, right? So you just look at the xy plane, which is just going to be a circle. R is from zero, R is in red, R is from zero to whatever that is. Well, that's the radius of the circle. If you look at the base, well, the still A. So R will go from zero to what? To A. Okay, zero to A for R. Last D, D theta d theta is about the rotation, right? Theta is about the rotation. So if you start from here, rotate 360 degrees, but we are all adults now, zero to two pi for d theta, okay? And now if you look at this right here, when you integrate this in the z world, you just pull a z, and you put this in there, and you put this in there, right? When you have this extra factor r, with the square root of a squared minus r squared, you can just do a u sub. Earlier, when you integrate this guy, you will have to do trick sub. So trick sub in the cylindrical system, they are kind of related, right? Remember, when you change dx dy to dr d theta, make sure you have the r. I have done some videos on that already. Make sure you remember that. Lastly, of course, the best among all in this situation is spherical. We are talking about sphere. So of course, the spherical coordinates will be the best. So in this case, remember, dx, dy, dz, once you change that to, let me just put this down. Mm, let's see. I will still have this right here, d rho, okay? And then we have d theta, and then lastly, we have d phi. This is the differential in the spherical system, but we will need to make sure we have what right here? We will need to make sure we have rho squared times sine phi. You can do so by doing the Jacobian, right? Or you can just look at the geometry as well. So this is the extra thing that we need when we use the spherical system. Now, let's figure out the limits of integration for rho, and then theta, and then phi. 
for rho, rho is the distance, right? From the origin to the sphere, so it's just a. So it will just be from zero to a. Done that. Next, theta. Theta is our rotation of the body, the horizontal rotation like this. That's just from zero to 360 degrees, which is zero to two pi. Done. Last, the phi. You start from the pass z axis, you do this rotation. It's only from zero to 180 degrees, which is zero to pi. Notice, all these three right here, they're just numbers. Right here, we have function and function, and right here we have function, 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 function. Yeah, so of course, this right here will be the easiest. And um, yeah, all in all, of course, if you work this out, you will get the volume equals four over three pi and the radius is a so we have a and then third power try it try it try to figure this out yeah that's it